for their final thoughts. Uh, Kerry, you led us off this afternoon. Perhaps you want to be the first to close us out with a few of your final thoughts. Uh, I just say that, um, you know, the gig workers are, 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 are here to stay. And um, uh, I think that, you know, with the rash of litigation uh, we see, um, I think um, the nation has to come to some kind of agreement on how to uh, treat these workers. Um, on the one hand, to provide um, some um, you know, standards for businesses um, to follow, some consistency. Um, and uh, on the other hand, for to, to help workers with uh, income uh, security. Um, so, you know, that's all I have to say. Thanks. Thank you so much, Josh. A few final thoughts from yourself before we close things out, please. Yeah, sure. So thanks, everyone, for the time today. Um, hopefully you learned something. Um, or hope. So if, if I'm if I'm a good business, I, I want to make sure that I've got a plan to manage the unemployment claims to tackle the volume. And I want to, to reevaluate those from time to time to see what states are giving me problems. Uh, what states are the hot spots that are really questioning the, the contractor classification. Um, I also want to be mindful of what I've done in response to COVID-19, take a look and see how that has impacted the classification and go ahead and think through, all right, how am I going to, to defend or, or address these changes if it's challenged in court or, or by an administrative agency? And then finally, I think that you got to kind of calendar at some point this year to take a look at your independent contractor agreement, um, whether it's a gig business or a, a more traditional independent contractor arrangement. There's just been so much that's changed. I feel like that there's got to be um, ways to improve your independent contractor agreement and make sure it's aligned with, with your actual operation. So that's everything that I have, but I really appreciate everybody's time today.